Coach, how much catharsis was it to take water guns into the locker room? Oh, yes. To finish Jeez. off this is what starts my Saturday's <laughs> season championship. Like I, I just... uh, take a definition first. <laughs> <laughs> you need to define it. Catharsis? Yeah. Define it. Just an emotional yep. release. How much of how much emotional well, release was there board. when you and your staff were able to go in and hose down your entire team? Oh, you're just having a good time. You got to celebrate. You know these these guys put in a lot of work. They put in a lot of work. The coaches invest a lot of time, and we're gonna have a good time while we're doing it. So it was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. It was a fun night. Just about you walk in. There's nine thousand people. I'd never been in the building for a basketball game before, uh, and then it was just a terrific game start to finish. Just the kind of the range of emotions over the forty minutes. Well, it was tough. I was it was senior day. So they, you know, that's an emotional event there as your seniors are playing their last game, you know, meeting with their family right before they walk out to, uh, to greet you there at midcourt. And then the incredible atmosphere. Uh, it was just, it was awesome. It was awesome. I think you really got to, uh, at least I tried to just step back and appreciate it. Uh, just, you, know, you look around and you're playing in front of 9,000 people. You're playing for a championship. You're celebrating two great seniors. We got to honor Job before the game for his 1,000-point club and the OVC single-season assist record. Uh, there was just a lot going on. Uh, and on top of all that, you're, you're playing for the regular season championship. So uh, that's why we spend a lot of time really just trying to focus on staying locked in on the task at hand because there was a lot of other stuff going on. Uh, and I thought our guys did a terrific job of it. And then the, the, the neat thing about it is uh, the 9,000 plus, I thought were treated uh, one of the best games of the year uh, in college basketball. I thought it was a high level game from both teams. And fortunately, we were able to really finish strong and then find a way to win it. With that being said, how much were you allowed, did you allow your team to kind of enjoy that, but quickly turning the focus to what you have to do on Friday? Oh, you enjoy it like crazy. I mean, you just won a championship that you've worked extremely hard to earn and uh, you celebrate it. And then you take Sunday to recover uh, from the, you know, it was a tough weekend too. You know, the trip to Moorhead's not easy uh, to go down and back there and come back and play at home on senior night. So you take Sunday to rest up, get, get focused in on your academics, and then today we'll start our preparation for the tournament. You guys, um, you obviously got great performances from Shaq and John um, when you needed them most, but special teams, Devin Gilmore in the first half, Javion Eves, Breon Sanchez playing 37 minutes. How important was it for this team to see that going into the tournament, knowing that secondary pieces can be just as critical um, in big moments? Well, I think we've been that way all season long. You know, we've had different guys have stepped up every game. Uh, we've had a lot of consistency with four guys in double figures, but then you've also had, you know, moments like Saturday, you know, where Breon goes 37 minutes and turns in an unbelievable defensive performance was really good on the glass, he converted a huge one and one late in the game. Uh, JV on three of four from three. Devin's outburst there in the first half was, was fun to watch. I mean, lob dunks, offensive rebound, putbacks, block shots, rebounds. Uh, he was everywhere. Uh, so it, it was good to see. And the other thing that was great to see is, you know, on senior night with all the emotions going on uh, to see Breon and Shaq play so well. Uh, I think it was certainly a memorable night for them. And uh, you know, Shaq was huge. I mean, he was he was incredible, especially in that second half. You had the, the double by last year. Um, how much can you take as far as preparation wise going into that, uh, heading into this year? Or is it, do you have to approach it differently because this is a different team? We'll approach it similar. Uh, you know, the, we take the first part of the week really just to focus on us. We, we've got a lot of getting better to do uh, in all areas. So we'll spend a lot of time on us these next couple of days and then start focusing in on potential teams we could play. Um, but I think you know, guys like Ja and Shaq and Breon can take a lot from it, haven't gone through it. But then the reality is the rest of our guys have never done it. Uh, so we'll count on, on those three guys to lead the way, uh, much the way they have all season long. You talked a little bit on Saturday night um, later, but 
transition defense was a, a little bit of a concern. Austin P really tried to run and, and get numbers and, and attack. Is that something that's a key focus over the next two days? I think it always is. It's it's one of the reasons we've been good the last couple of years. We we haven't given up a whole lot of easy baskets in transition, and you got to give a lot of credit to Austin P. They were they were outstanding on the break. I mean, as soon as we scored, that ball was right up the floor, and uh, they hit some big shots. Uh, they got to the basket early in transition. Uh, it's certainly something that we have to clean up, especially going into tournament play, where uh, usually the game slows down a little bit in the tournament. Uh, so you you definitely can't afford to give up easy baskets uh, like both teams allowed on on Saturday night. Uh, Dave told us about John making the Cousy finalist list. Just a, a comment on that and him getting that farther. Oh, I'm excited for him. I mean, obviously he's the best point guard in the country, so you know, no surprise. You know, and would fully expect him to win the award. Uh, and I'm not sure when they pass it out, but he's just had an incredible year and uh, the accolades will continue to come in after the season. Uh, but got his 300th assist on the season on Saturday and just you know had another casual 27 point, 10 assist. Uh, or what was it, 11? 13. Oh, sorry, sorry. I mean, you know, 27 points, 13 assists, six rebounds. You know, normal night at the office for him. When you have that double bye, how do you approach maybe scouting throughout the week when you have three teams that you might be playing you have no idea really defensively? You have to prepare for all of them because you never know what can happen in tournament play. So we'll, we'll certainly take that approach throughout the week. Uh, guys won nine straight coming in and you needed every one of them to get the double bye. How pivotal was it for your team to get the message that we needed to win to get the, a top two seed? Well, the, guy, the guys knew. We told them at the end of January, you know, I had a pretty good feeling of what we would have to get done if we wanted to share the title and have an opportunity to get the double bye. So, I thought they, they knew what was on the line for the last, I guess, four and a half weeks or so. And they did a really good job of just staying focused on the task at hand, you know, the old one game at a time cliche, and, uh, you know, delivered. And so now everybody resets. Every, there are eight teams left, and everyone's zero and zero. And uh, we got to get better this week. You know, some of their, their teams that we could potentially face that beat us. There's teams like Austin P, who you know we played in two high-level great games with. So uh, I think it's important that we really focus on Murray State these next couple of days and, and try to get better in preparation for the tournament. Coach, you have a neutral site, neutral <coughs> state. Yet anyone at the tournament last year knows there's nothing further from that if uh, the Racer fans turn out as they did last year. Well, it was a special weekend last year. Uh, I think on the Saturday it was close to 6,000 you know, Murray State fans up there. So. Um, we hope everyone will get there Friday. Uh, we, we, Friday at 9 o'clock. Uh, we know Indiana is a great basketball state. I think you've seen the crowds that uh, Ja and our team have brought in on the road this season. So I'd expect there'll be a lot of basketball fans uh, in attendance this weekend as well. Uh, but we know we can count on Racer Nation to show up in big numbers and create a great atmosphere at the Ford Center again. When Cowart's been in the game, uh, your offense, at least it seems like, is able to flow a little bit easier. Uh, obviously on Saturday he had some foul trouble, but you were able to get some relief with Gilmore coming into the game, a couple other guys. Going into the tournament though, how much are you kind of is, are you talking to Darnell about, you know, trying to, you know, avoid some of the, you know, the, the yeah. fouls that he can't avoid? Well, it's important. I mean, we need him on the floor as much as we can with his skill level, ability to score, or his passing. Uh, so we need him to avoid foul trouble. Uh, but at the same time, I mean, we're 12th in the country in scoring. So, I mean, we, we've managed to score a lot of points uh, from, from multiple guys. Uh, but but he's, he's a huge part of what we do. So, so we need him to, to avoid the ticky-tack fouls for sure. I know it was just one game and really one half. Austin Peay hit a lot of contested threes in the first half, but obviously percentage-wise, 7 of 12 in the first half, 1 of 11 in the second. What changed and, and what are the metrics and what do you talk to with your team at those moments that changes things like that in the second half? I thought in the first half, and credit to, to Terry Taylor, I thought they hit some tough ones. And, and, and it's not like they were prayers. He's done it all season long. Uh, but I, I thought we were there. We contested uh, a 
couple of them were beyond the NBA three. Uh, Galata hit a really tough one off the bounce. Um, so you hope the law of averages catch up to you. But to Austin Peay's credit, you know, it's, they, they've led the league in three-point shooting all season long. You know, they were over 40% coming into our game. So we knew that would be a key stat. Uh, I, th I thought we were really active both halves defensively. And unfortunately, the numbers caught up to us in the second half when they went one for 11 from behind the arc. It wasn't really anything we did differently defensively. I thought our effort was good both halves. We were just uh, fortunate that, that some of them didn't go down.